The Savannah Sprinting Zebra. The Latin origin of its name, Aquiferus, literally translates to wild horse. There are three species of zebra, all of which roam the African plains. Grebe zebra, the plain zebra, and the mountain zebra. Of all the equine species that roam the earth, zebras are one of the most aggressive, which made it almost impossible for our ancestors to domesticate them. If they had, who knows? African civilizations may have been able to grow large enough to rival even the Mongolian empires back in their heyday. Anyway, the quirky bundle of energy known as the zebra has puzzled biologists for quite some time, thanks to, in particular, its stripes. First, there's the debate regarding whether zebras were white with black stripes or black with white stripes. The answer is that zebras are black with white stripes. While in their mother's womb, zebras start with black skin, upon which white stripes emerge prior to their birth. Considering how zebra stripes don't really blend in with the plains they live in and how no other savanna-dwelling animals share this characteristic, it's no wonder biologists were curious about these guys. Scientists have worked especially hard to determine how stripes, of all things, could have helped zebras survive the savanna. So, what have scientists discovered about the zebra's stripes? Our adventure into the mysteries surrounding the zebra stripes begins. Alfred Russell Wallace, an evolutionary biologist who lived around the same time as Charles Darwin, looked at the zebra stripes and said, those must be for camouflage. Don't they look like they'd be pretty good at confusing predators? Given the following logic, Wallace's theory made some sense. Some predators, like the lion, have dichromatic vision, so amongst the sea of grass, the stripes might help the zebra more easily evade its hunters. This camouflage theory was dominant in explaining the zebra's stripes, which led scientists to further validate it with theories of their own. A notable example is the optical illusion camouflage effect. It hypothesizes that a group of zebras could create a dazzle camouflage effect. In fact, during World War I, dazzle camouflage was implemented by painting the outside of naval vessels with stripes and shapes to confuse enemies. Dazzle camouflage might have made ships easier to spot, but could help mask a ship's range, direction, and speed. And, well, zebras may have been going for the same thing. If a lot of zebras gathered in one place, from a predator's perspective, their stripes might be seen as a single large pattern, which could have made it difficult for predators to pick a specific target to hunt. In fact, in 2013, professors Martin J. Howe and Johannes M. Zonker analyzed zebra stripes in motion to see just how visually confusing they were. They discovered that zebras, indeed, created optical illusionary patterns, particularly when a dazzle of them moved together. Professor Zonker showed that the visual effect was akin to both a barbershop pole, which rotates horizontally while appearing to move vertically, and a wagon wheel, which, when spinning fast enough, looks to be rotating backwards. However, the camouflage theory had a critical flaw. Zebras are one of the lion's main courses. If the stripes had evolved as a form of camouflage, then it would stand to reason that zebras should be eaten less frequently than other medium to large sized hooved animals, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Also, it's suspicious that despite the presence of predators like the tiger, there doesn't seem to be any striped equines living in Asia. Perhaps this is why some other scientists came up with the compelling thermal regulation theory. In 2015, Dr. Brenda Larison of UCLA published a paper that explained how when standing under the sun, a zebra's black striped areas would heat up quickly, creating updrafts, while the relatively cooler white striped areas would cause downdrafts, circulating the air around the zebra and cooling it down even in hotter areas. And after a bit of research, they found that striped mammals have skin that is, on average, 3 degrees Celsius lower than unstriped mammals. However, this theory also faced a lot of criticism. If their stripes had evolved to accommodate heat, then ideally zebras should be able to graze even in the hottest savanna temperatures, but most zebras just go to the shade when it gets hot. <laughs> anyway, this means the cooling effects of the stripes are minimal. 
And in 2018, Dr. Gaber Horvath published a paper with an experiment that proved zebra stripes hadn't evolved for bodily cooling. Like in the photograph above, he draped striped and unstriped leather over barrels and measured how their temperature changed over time. They basically learned that, unless in direct sunlight, there was no temperature difference between the white and black stripes, and furthermore, due to the lack of air circulation, there was no identifiable cooling effect. Well, if both the camouflage theory and the thermoregulation theory weren't enough, what was it that natural selection saw in those stripes? Astonishingly, a recent argument that seems to be gaining traction is the biting fly theory. It states that the zebra's stripes evolved to help it avoid being bitten by biting flies. Biting flies are flies that drink the blood of other animals. How much blood, you may ask? Well, a study found that a swarm of biting flies extracted as much as 500 cc from a single cow. Actually, the biting fly theory was first proposed in 1930 by Dr. Harris, and recently, supporting theories have been popping up. Dr. Adam Egri of Hungary conducted a study which involved painting a horse model black, white, brown, and striped, and then covering it with an adhesive. They then counted how many biting flies stuck to each of the models. The result was that the black model attracted 562 flies, the brown 334, the white 22, and amazingly, the model painted with zebra stripes only attracted 8 flies. Afterwards, American professor Tim Caro of the University of California published two papers demonstrating why zebra stripes deterred biting flies. Why don't we take a look at this picture from that paper? The red line indicates the movement path of the biting fly. Can you see how more flies approach the brown horse? Professor Caro also conducted an experiment where he dressed a horse in zebra stripes. They dressed up seven horses all together. They alternated clothes from black to white to striped and then measured biting fly approach rates. In the end, they found that the biting flies had a very hard time approaching the horses when they were clothed in stripes. What's fascinating is that when the horses were swathed in stripes, the biting flies swarmed towards the horses' unstriped heads. Professor Caro showed that when biting flies near the stripes, they do things like turn 180 degrees, making it very difficult for them to fly properly. Many biologists seem to agree with this iteration of the biting fly theory. But hang on, why do I feel like I'm missing something? Ah, oh, that's right! Biting flies don't only bite zebras, so why don't all of the other animals living in the African savanna have stripes? Dr. Caro points to the zebra's fur. This is a picture Dr. Caro used to compare the hair lengths of zebra, wildebeest, oryx, and wild donkeys. Can you see how the zebra's fur is definitely shorter than the others? That's right. With shorter fur, zebras made easy prey for the biting flies, that is, until they evolved stripes as a countermeasure to confuse them. As of yet, this notion proposed by Dr. Caro requires more research, so we aren't quite sure why biting flies are so keen to target zebras. Isn't it amazing the sheer number of scientists who researched and debated about the origins of the zebra's stripes? And now that we've come this far, I kind of want to ask a question to the zebra's ancestor. Like, why did only the striped survive? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you.